Hey guys, so today I am going to talk about the reserve list and whether or not this new proxy, a lot of people calling a proxy product, the 30th anniversary product actually breaks the, first of all, we're going to look at the legal definition. You know, if there actually is a potential court case that can be had or a legal argument that can be had. And then we'll look at the more ethical and gray areas, whether or not this would be good for the player base and was that type of relationship or agreement being broken, is that going to hurt the game? So first of all, there is, let me just say, and you can end the video, there is no legal argument in my opinion that the reserve list is an actual contract. The reserve list, I mean, to have a contract, you need a defined party so Wizards of the Coast would be one defined party. That's fine. That would be the, the person, one person signing the contract. The other person signing the contract would be Magic players. Now, back then, a lot of the Magic players today did not play Magic. So are they part of that party? Would they also be protected? Would they also be part of this group? Hard to figure out, right? Because how can you accept the contract for the reserve list when you, in fact, didn't even know Magic was, I mean, there might be some scenarios where you weren't even born. When a Magic player to have standing would absolutely need to be born, right? Because they're not, they kind of just weren't, they couldn't possibly be a Magic player if they weren't living, okay? Uh, just put it that way. So there might be younger Magic players that were not even alive as babies during when the reserve list was created. Secondly, there has to kind of be a definition. So the reserve list has always been very fickle. In the past, they reprinted judge promos. You have survival of the fittest, that uh, wheel of fortune. These cards are on the reserve list, but they have judge promo versions of them, which are incredibly expensive and foil. Uh, beyond that, uh, from the vault, from the vault that had Mox Diamond that had memory jar, those cards are on the reserve list. So up to the point that they actually made the reserve list, they continue to print cards. They made oversized cards. I think of Sliver Queen was one of them. And they, there was nothing, nobody complained. No one sued them. Okay, no one sued them for that. So there is actually a very interesting example, right? Let's say you have a bunch of survival of the fittest, which I do and they reprinted a, a judge promo with a beautiful artwork, nobody went to sue them at that time. So not only do you not, in my opinion, you don't really have standing to sue and then you have to prove damages and all that. I mean, it would be difficult. It would be difficult to do all this. What I'm saying is if there is a contract, typically there is one party. Now, could a contract, in, you know, could it be like, oh, your heirs and so on. Yeah, of course, there are contracts like that. But this contract does not really specify what type of reprints. Can we reprint it in a judge promos? Can we reprint it in collector's edition and proxy form? Can we, it, because it was never meant to be a contract, it is super vague as how, what the reprints actually mean. Can they make a card that is identical and just has a different name and has the same ability and effects? Can they make a card with a different backing? And that's what we're talking about right now. And the answer is yes, 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 yes. Because they have done so in the past and no one has sued them. And it's been many, many years. So typically speaking, if you have a contract and you choose not to enforce the contract, if the player base, the millions of players do not choose to sue them at the time that they printed the survival of the fittest, then they printed a Mox Diamond, then they printed the Oversized Cards, and printed Memory Jar, and printed Wheel of Fortune. At that time, that's the time that if you want to enforce a contract, that's when you would do it. Not decades later, oh, I don't like these new cards. Well, where were you when they printed Wheel? Where were you when they reprinted uh, Survival of the Fittest? So in my opinion, to have an agreement, to have a contract, you need a party that is a very, is somewhat defined, okay? Is it all Magic players today? Is it all Magic players today and all future Magic players? That absolutely was never defined in the contract. 
So the party that would benefit from this was never defined. Uh, how, I mean, again, assuming there is a benefit, let's put it that way. And lastly, I mean, you've already had reprints. You've already had many reprints and no one has sued them in the past. So even if you have an agreement with someone and you're constantly violating agreement, but the other person is not doing anything, and this has continued for decades, over a decade, then the court is gonna say, well, you know, you had your chance to speak up, you had your chance to sue, what happened then? Okay, you just didn't, nobody did it. Out of a million people, millions of people, right, had the opportunity to sue when they reprinted these other cards and they chose not to. You can't then sue later on because it's a, uh, you've already accepted that this is the way things have been. So it sounds kind of interesting, but if you have notification, if you know that they reprinted reserve, everyone knows that they reprint. It's public knowledge that Mox Diamond has a reprint. It's public knowledge Survival of the Fittest has a reprint with the correct backs, by the way. So the reserve list, if they wanted to reprint Black Lotus with the correct back, with the Magic the Gathering back, there's nothing anyone can do. And if they shoot them, they would lose. And it really comes down to two facts, right? It, what party has standing? Who would actually have standing? It would, I mean, the best example would be somebody who played Magic at the time, quit Magic because of Chronicles, came back in Magic when they had a reserve list, and just started collecting reserve lists. That would be the best defendant possible. But even then, it would be like, okay, defendant, you've been around this game for a long time. Did you know that Survival of Fittest has been reprinted? Yep. Okay, did you not file off suit back then? Nope. How about uh, Wheel of Fortune? Yep. Nope. How about, you know, uh, Memory Jar? Nope. Nope. So Sliver Queen, Oversized? Nope. So why are you filing now? So they have violated the reserve list many, many times in the past. Just people forget about this. So the reserve list is already like when people talk about it as contracts or, you know, legal terms, you, you cannot because if there are many cases, case law where there might be a contract, but due to circumstances, you know, person gets away with do not doing what they're supposed to be doing. And, it's the whole idea that like you have to enforce. If you have notification something is wrong, you're notified that something is wrong, and you have you know that hey these cards have been reprinted. You need to within time get go after that lawsuit then, not wait until other reprints happen because you've already accepted the outcome. You already accepted that them reprinting these cards as judge promos as with the correct back by the way so i mean this reprint is just like a collector's edition so it's even harder to really pinpoint but you've already said wheel of fortune what's the difference between reprinting wheel of fortune today or a decade plus ago and black lotus today they're both on a reserve list they've both been in alpha beta unlimited what what's wrong um and the answer is nothing's wrong like you had the opportunity you chose multiple times not to sue, and now a decade plus later, you're, you wanna sue. It, it's not, you're not gonna win. You're not gonna win because you had notification. There was no like justification for you. If you really were upset, and you really believed that the reserve list was a contract between you and Wizards of the Coast, and you had standing, you could prove that your cards went down, you had damage, you had all that, which is already insanely difficult to probably prove. Why didn't you sue back then? So everything, you know, every single contract, every single thing has a time limit, right? There, you don't want, and legally, and this is one of the legal things, you don't want to do something today and then like 50 years from now, somebody sues you because you did it incorrectly. Like there should be some time limit where a statue of limitations or something like that where hey this contract is no longer valid because we have done things to invalidate it multiple times and every time we did something no one spoke up anyway that's my perspective i don't think the reserve list is a contract i don't think there's any legal the ethical things i think they shit themselves in the pants um because this is going to be a nightmare for them 
Marrow's getting a lot of hate. Flesh and blood players are, you know, you know things are bad. So I can just play this way. You know things are bad when the flesh and blood players and the meta zoo players, they're like, oh, we would never do that to you. And now they're taking advantage of the bad PR, of course. So whenever flesh and blood channel, multiple of them, they're making these anti-magic videos, you know it's bad when other card games are making videos trying to steal your player base to go to their card game and you gave them actually a very good excuse to do that, uh, that is a very bad PR move. So legally, they're in the right. In my opinion, legally, they're in the right. I'm an attorney barred in New York. I've been an IP attorney for probably close to a decade now, uh, doing handling things like this. Um, if somebody wanted to hire me, Valve Investment wanted to hire me to sue Wizard of the Coast, I said, go F yourself. We're not gonna win. I'm not gonna take the case. Um, you, there's no way to win. There's no way to win because if you could have won, it would have been 15 years ago, 20 years ago. Whenever they were reprinting Survival, Wheel, Mox, Sliver, I mean, they were reprinting everything back in the day. They tested it. Nobody sued them. They said, okay, we're good to go. And they waited a decade plus. But there is precedence that nothing happened. Nobody had the money or no one wanted or no one thought they was wrong. Regardless of whatever happened within the last 15 years, no one did anything. So as a judge, as a lawyer, you look at that and say, oh, there must be a reason that millions of players thought that reprinting Survival of Fittest as a judge promo was okay. There's a reason that millions of players thought that reprinting uh, Mox Diamond from the vault special set was okay. They didn't get sued for those. Why would they get sued for this? Anyway, guys.